Greetings, friends. Welcome back to our devotional study today. Yesterday, we began a study in the book of Philemon. And what a neat little book this is. We learned that this is a personal letter that Paul writes uh, to Philemon. But yet at the same time, uh, it is a letter that is without a doubt inspired by God. And um, we looked at the background to this yesterday, how that Onesimus, a slave of Philemon, had fled from Philemon. He had stolen from him, had fled to Rome. In Rome, he had met Paul. Paul had preached the gospel to him. He was gloriously saved under Paul's ministry. And now God sends, or Paul sends Onesimus back to Philemon with this letter in his possession, um, encouraging Philemon to accept him and uh, to treat him as he would treat Paul, as we'll see in just a few moments. So today I want to take a few minutes to look at Paul's salutation to Philemon here in verses 1 through 3. It says in verse 1 of Philemon, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy our brother, unto Philemon our dearly beloved and fellow laborer, and to our beloved Apia and Archippus our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy house, grace to you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First of all, we see here, it's interesting. Some people, if they had been writing this letter, might have said that they were a prisoner of Rome or that they were a prisoner of Nero. But as Paul writes this letter, he says that he is a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Now, in that, what we are seeing is Paul is considering his imprisonment to be the will of God. We know that Paul is in prison in these verses for the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ in Rome. And Nero did not like that. Of course, Nero, the leader in Rome, was not a friend of Christianity. And as a result of that, Paul was persecuted and Paul was put in prison for the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But Paul was not one of these guys that said, I'm doing OK under the circumstances. No, friends, the truth of the matter is, as you study the life of the Apostle Paul, he did not allow himself to get under the circumstances. He realized that through the person of Jesus Christ, that he could rise above the circumstances that he, could, that he was in, and that God had a purpose in the circumstances that he allowed Paul to go through. And Paul used every one of those avenues as an opportunity to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. So Paul describes himself as a prisoner of Jesus Christ. And then he also talks about, and Timothy, our brother, on the Philemon, our dearly beloved and fellow laborer. Notice the terms of endearment that uh, Paul uses here with Philemon. It is obvious that Paul is a good friend of Philemon. He's just not trying to butter Philemon up for the message that he's going to bring to him in this chapter. He was truly a good friend of Philemon. Philemon was, was a person that meant a lot to Paul, and you can see that through these terms of endearment that Paul uses. He talks about the fact that he is a brother. Friends, you and I need to understand that uh, those who know the Lord Jesus Christ, that they are our brothers and sisters in Christ, and we need to be careful how we treat our brothers, how we treat our sisters. And that's very important for us uh, as the people of God. And as we come into that whole idea, he also says not only a, a brother, but he says our dearly beloved. So he reminds us here that uh, once again, that Philemon was a was a relationship that he treasured. And he's treating Philemon with respect. And so we see here how we should be treating our brothers and sisters in Christ. And then he also says here that he is a fellow laborer. That reveals to us that Paul and Philemon had worked together in the work of the ministry. And uh, as we stop and we, we think about that simple truth, uh, you know, God has called us to all, all ultimately be laborers together with God, but also that by love we would serve one another, and that in our churches, that each person in the body has a fit and a function. And that when we all work together and do that which God has called us to do, that indeed that uh, the body functions smoothly. So he says here that he was a fellow laborer. 
literally a companion in the work. And oh, friends, what a blessing it is to have fellow laborers. I thank God on a regular basis for the fellow laborers that God has given to us in our ministry. I thank God for those who are companions in the labor that I can work with in the fields of the Lord, accomplishing that which God has called us to do through the various areas that God is working. And not only in fellow laborers in work, but also I thank God for fellow laborers who stand with us through their prayers. And certainly, uh, you know, I, I've had people that desired to financially support our ministry and they said we really can't all we can do is pray for you and i'm like whoa 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 hold on for a minute what do you mean all you can do is pray friends i'm a firm believer that there's nothing greater that somebody could do for you than to pray and i thank god for those who have committed to praying for us committed to praying for what god is doing in and through our ministry and uh, also fellow laborers in giving so that we can do what he is that God has called us to do. So he says we're a fellow laborer, but then he says in verse 2, and to our beloved Apia and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in thine house. So he also gives greeting to Aphia and Archippus. And Aphia very well may have been the wife of Philemon, and Archippus may have been his son or a prominent member of the church. She is mentioned actually. If you come back to Colossians chapter 4, Colossians chapter 4, and in verse 17, it says there, And say to Archippus, Take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. What a wonderful admonition to understand that God has given to each of us a ministry. And that my responsibility is not to look at what somebody else is doing and to say, wow, I, I wish I could do what they're doing. No, my responsibility is to say, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? What's the ministry that you have for me in the church that you've given me to be a part of? And then by the grace of God, that it would be our desire to fulfill that ministry that God has given to us. So in verse 1, he's called a fellow laborer. Then in verse 2, He's called a fellow soldier. Friend, let me remind you today that the Christian life is not a playground. It is a battlefield. And that our battle is not with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Our battle is not with the one who sits across from us in church. That our battle, Ephesians 6 says, is not with flesh and blood, but it's with principalities and powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Isn't it sad that Satan has convinced so many Christians today that our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ are the enemy, or that somebody else is the enemy? Friends, they're not the enemy. Satan is our enemy. We are fellow soldiers. We need to work together, encourage one another, help one another, strengthen one another, help one another up when we're down or injured, and do all that we can do to get that person back in the fight. Why? Because they're a fellow laborer and they are a fellow soldier. And then he says to the church in thine house. We know that churches met in homes many times in the New Testament because they had no church buildings. And we can see that over and over again in Revelation 16. 1 Corinthians 16 and other places that Paul sends greetings to the church in thy house. You know, we may we may very well, before this is over with, we may very well be going that road again. There may be a time when uh, it will be illegal to meet in our big fancy church buildings here in North America. And uh, we may be meeting in houses. We may be meeting in the woods. We may be meeting wherever it is that we can meet so that we do not forsake the assembling of ourselves together, and so that we make sure that we're doing the will of God and that the work of God goes forward. So that is Paul's greeting. And then in verse 3, we see Paul's benediction. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We, we could say a whole lot about grace and peace. I'm almost out of time for today. So let me just say this. In Paul's greetings, grace and peace always come. In that order for this reason I believe it's not a happenstance it's not a coincidence that they're always in that order and the reason they're in that order is this friend you cannot experience the peace of God and peace with one another until you have first of all experienced the grace of God in your life let me ask you today as we close 
have you experienced the grace of God that bringeth salvation? Has th Does that mean anything to you? Friends, if not, today could be the day of so great salvation. I encourage you, get a hold of me or get a hold of somebody that you know knows beyond a shadow of a doubt that they're a child of God. And we'd love to show you from the pages of the Word of God how you too can experience God's grace and God's peace. Have a great day.